Hello and welcome to this video presentation of our paper Practical Performance of Space Efficient Data Structures for Longest Come Extensions. My name is Florian Kurpitz and this is joint work with Patrick Dinklage, Johannes Fischer, Alexander Herletz and Tomasz Kuciumaka. In this presentation I will show you our recent advances regarding answering longest come extension queries in practice. First, let us take a look at the problem. Given a text T of length n of an alphabet of size sigma, we want a data structure that answers longest come extension queries. A longest come extension query has two text positions i and j and returns the maximum length for which the two substrings starting at the text positions i and j are equal. In our small example below, the longest come extension of the text positions 1 and 14 is 5, as the first five characters starting at those positions are the same and only the six characters differ. Longest come extensions have many applications, among others sparse suffix sorting, approximate pattern matching, string mining and many more. In this presentation we focus on practical results. For pointers to related theoretical work we refer to our paper. So now let us have a look at practical algorithms and data structures for longest come extension queries. Ely and Tinta presented two approaches for longest come extension queries. The first one is very naive. Here we simply scan the text character by character starting at the text positions received by the longest come extension query until we have a mismatch. This results in a query time that is proportional to the result of the longest come extension query. Hence, the query time is O of n in the worst case. However, there is no additional space required as there is no data structure required for this approach at all. We call the second approach sophisticated black box. This approach is based on the inverse suffix array, longest come prefix array and range minimum queries. But for this presentation we treat it as black box. Nevertheless, the black box can actually answer longest come extension queries in constant time. The downside is that the data structures required by this black box approach are very large. We require around 9 times the input size for this approach. When we visualize these two approaches in a space query time diagram, we see that they are at the opposite sides of the diagram. So there is a very clear trade off between space and query time. Unfortunately, the size required by the black box approach is so large that it is not useful in practice. This led to the common belief that the scan approach is the only feasible solution to answer longest come extension queries in practice. In the following, we'll take a look at two data structures that have a better space query time trade off. Both approaches have a significantly better space requirement than the black box approach, but can also be faster when it comes to answering longest come extension queries than the naive scan approach. The first data structure is based on Rabin Karp fingerprints and has been introduced by Pretzer. To compute the fingerprints, we use a rolling hash function. Then we compute the fingerprints of all prefixes whose size is a multiple of a predetermined fixed block size. Using these fingerprints, we can compute all other fingerprints that we require to answer longest come extension queries. As a simplified example, if we want to compute this brown fingerprint, we can simply use the teal and the lime colored ones. Another nice property of the fingerprints is that we can store them in place by overwriting the text. To this end we have to choose the block size accordingly. Also, all parts of the text are restorable, so we do not lose any information if we choose to overwrite the text. To compute a longest come extension using these fingerprints we start with an exponential search until the fingerprints mismatch and then use a binary search to identify the exact block where the mismatch occurs. Thus, the advantage of this fingerprint approach is that we can simply use the exponential search and do not have to compare the text character by character. The same is true for the binary search. Only when we have identified the exact blocks where the mismatch happens, we have to restore the text of the blocks that contains the mismatch and compare them character by character. In practice, we currently only consider byte alphabets. Therefore, we use 8 characters per block as those fit in a single 64 bit word. To compute the fingerprints with our rolling hash function, we now have to use 128 bit words, which are fortunately supported by most modern CPUs. We also restore the first 256 characters before starting the exponential search and compare them character by character, as restoring this number of characters is relatively cheap and reduces the overhead during the initial exponential search. Now let us focus on our second approach, because the approach based on fingerprints has already been introduced by Pretzer and our implementation only provides improvements regarding the construction time. Our second data structure for longest come extensions is based on string synchronizing sets. String synchronizing sets have recently been introduced in a theoretical paper by Kemper and Kochumaka that tackles the longest come extension and sparse suffix sorting problem. 
We now take a look on how to use string synchronizing sets in practice, especially on how to solve longest come extension queries using string synchronizing sets in practice and present some practical improvements. Given a text t of length n and a parameter tau which is greater than zero but at most half text length, the string synchronizing set of the text consists of text positions between the first text position and the last text position minus two tau plus one. While this formula looks rather complicated, its content is easy to explain. Let us have a look at the example below. We start with an interval of the first tau plus one characters of the text. Now we compute fingerprints of substrings of length tau, starting with the first position in our interval, the second, the third, and so on, until we reach the last position in our interval. Then we want to know if the smallest fingerprint is resulting from the first or the last substring in our interval. If either of those conditions is true, we add the first position of the interval to our string synchronizing set. Then we repeat this process for all intervals of length tau plus one, starting at text positions up to text length minus two tau plus one. Note that we can reuse most fingerprints that we have computed for the previous interval. To be more precise, we can reuse all but one fingerprint and thus only have to compute a single new fingerprint. On most datasets in practice, this results in string synchronizing sets of size theta of n over tau. In theory, however, the definition is more complicated to guarantee this size. The next question is how to use string synchronizing sets to answer longest come extension queries. Here, we use two very nice properties of the string synchronizing set S, the consistency and a simplified density property. The consistency property says that for all text positions i and j that can be in S, we have that if the substrings of length 2 tau starting at positions i and j are equal, then either both i and j are in S or none of those positions is in S. The simplified density property says that for any tau consecutive text positions, there is at least one position in S. These two properties allow us to compute a new text C prime for all positions in S. To this end, we consider the substrings of length three tau starting at each position in S. Each of those substrings is now a new character in our text T prime. When we compute the text in practice, we first sort all these substrings and then use the ranks of the substrings as characters of T prime. Then we build the black box longest come extension data structure that I mentioned in the beginning for T prime. There's just one small change in the black box longest come extension data structure for T prime because we're not interested in the longest come extensions in T prime but in T. Thus, the black box does not return the longest come extensions for T prime but the actual longest come extensions in T. It is worth mentioning that the ranks of the substring coincides with the lexicographical order of the suffixes starting at the same positions. We make use of this property when computing the black box longest come extension data structure for T prime. Now we can make use of our string synchronizing set S, the text T, the new text T prime, and the black box longest come extension data structure for T prime to answer longest come extension queries on T. The general idea to compute the longest come extensions for two text positions i and j is the following. We first compare the first three tau characters naively. If there is a mismatch, we have found the longest come extension. Otherwise, we search for the first position in S after i and j, which we call their successors in S. Then we use the black box to compute the size of the longest come extensions starting at the successors. We then have to simply add the number of characters between i or j and the corresponding successor in S to the result. In our example, this would be S1 minus i plus the size of the longest come extension in T prime. We also provide a very fast static successor data structure to find the next position S in practice. This data structure is described in more detail in our paper. In addition to this general idea, we also have a version that is faster for long longest come extension. We call it the prefer long version. Here, we first look for the successors of i and j, and if both successors have the same distance to the text positions i and j, we only have to scan up to that position naively. In practice, this saves a lot of naive comparison compared to the general idea. However, if the longest come extension is short, we have a mismatch early on, and therefore we do not make use of the result of the successor query. In practice, this unnecessary successor query makes the prefer long version much slower for short longest come extensions which we will also see in our experiments. Now the remaining open question is, how practical are those two approaches, the Rabin Kaff fingerprint approach and the approach based on string synchronizing sets? To answer this question, we implemented those approaches. In the following evaluation, we compare multiple algorithms and data structures that can answer longest come extension queries. 
The difference between those two algorithms is that the ultra-naive one compares the text character by character, whereas in the naive approach we make use of 128 bit words to compare 16 characters at a time. Then we have re-implemented the fingerprint approach by Pretza, we call this our Rabin Carp. And of course we have implemented the data structures based on string synchronizing sets for different tau values. These data structures also support both query ideas, the general idea and the prefer long version. We compare our implementations with the only other implementations of data structures that can answer longest come extension queries that we were able to find. First, this is the Rabin Carp fingerprint implementation by Pretze, and second, we use two compressed suffix tree implementations that are part of the succinct data structure library to answer longest come extension queries. We ran our experiments on quite potent server hardware, but since all our algorithms and data structures are sequential, only one core at a time was used. Additionally, all reported results are the average of five runs. As inputs, we use texts from the Pizza Chili corpus, which contains regular and repetitive texts. In the following, I will show you results for three texts. DNA, English and Sere, where the letter is a highly repetitive text. In our paper we present results for nine additional texts. However, all results are very similar with one outlier that is Sere, which is why I included it here in this presentation. Now let us take a look at the construction time and memory consumptions of all algorithms and data structures. In these three plots we see the construction time per character on the x-axis and the memory consumption in addition to the input text on the y-axis. Let us first focus on the DNA text. Here we can see that the naive approaches and the approaches based on Rabin Carp fingerprints require no additional memory, hence they are truly in place. What is interesting however is that our fingerprint data structure can be constructed significantly faster than the one by Pretza. This is true on all inputs but Sere, where Pretza's implementation comes close to our implementation when it comes to construction time. Next we consider our string synchronizing set data structures. Those are all marked by an X. For these algorithms we report two memory peaks. Here the upper mark is the memory peak during construction and the lower mark is the memory required for the final data structure. The additional memory required during construction is slightly more than one byte per character. We also see that the general space consumption is higher for lower tau values. This is because for lower tau values the size of the string synchronizing set is larger. Only on Sere this is not strictly true which can be explained by the highly repetitiveness of Sere that leads to relatively large string synchronizing sets even for larger tau values. The remaining reported results with two memory peaks are from the compressed suffix trees. On DNA the compressed suffix tree requires more construction time and additional memory than all other algorithms and data structures. On English we were not able to compute the compressed suffix trees using the succinct data structure library. And on Sere the compressed suffix tree still requires more memory than our string synchronizing set data structures However, it can be computed faster than those except for the one where tau equals 256. And with that remark, let us have a look at the query times of our string synchronizing set data structures for different tau values. Here we see the query throughput on the y-axis. We measure this throughput for different length of longest come extensions that are depicted on the x-axis. In general, we can see that for very small longest come extension values, the query throughput is higher than for larger ones. However, the devil is in the details. Let us first take a look at the general query routine where we do not prefer long queries. On DNA and English the results look very similar. The query throughput decreases the longer the longest come extensions become. However, at some point it starts to increase again. This point differs for all tau values. This can be explained with the three tau characters that we have to scan naively before we can use our black box data structure on the text T'. For long longest come extension values there will be no mismatch in the first three tau characters and we have to rely on our black box data structure on T'. Hence the scan is redundant and it takes longer for greater tau values. In practice it does not matter that the text T' is longer for shorter tau values when it comes to our black box approach on T'. On Sere these results look slightly intermangled. For example for tau equals 512 the throughput decreases significantly before it increases again. However, even on Sere a small tau value will result in higher query throughput for long longest come extension values. Now let us take a look at the query throughput for the prefer long version. For small longest come extension values the throughput is significantly less than what we can expect when we use the general version. This comes at no surprise because for short longest come extension values we find the mismatch during the naive scan part, but when we use the prefer long version we first ask a successor query before doing the naive scan. But the result of this successor query will never be used. The opposite is true when it comes to long longest come extension values. Because here we have to compare less characters naively when we use the prefer long version, which results in a higher query throughput. 
When we look at all texts, we can see that the prefer long version for tau equals 512 is the fastest when it comes to long longest come extension values. Therefore, we will now only consider the string synchronizing set data structure for tau equals 512 when we compare our string synchronizing set data structure with all other longest come extension algorithms and data structures. As final evaluation of this presentation, we will now take a look at all algorithms and data structures that can answer longest come extension queries. The structure of these plots is the same as the structure of the plots on the previous slide. We compare the query throughput with respect to the size of the longest come extensions. First, let us take a look at the longest come extension data structures based on the compressed suffix tree. The black line corresponds to the naive scan, just to give an idea of the speed of this simple approach. On DNA, there are some ups and downs when it comes to the query throughput, but overall the throughput is independent from the size of the longest come extensions. On Sere, short longest come extension queries can be answered significantly faster than all other longest come extension queries, but overall we see the same behavior as on DNA. We have no result for the English text, as we were not able to compute the compressed suffix tree for this input. Overall, the throughput of the approach based on compressed suffix trees is significantly lower than all other tested approaches. But to be fair, the compressed suffix tree can also be used to answer different type of queries, for example pattern matching queries, which all other algorithms and data structures that we plotted here cannot do. Next, we take a look at the longest come extension data structures based on Rabin calf fingerprints. In orange, we see our implementation, while Pretzer's implementation is depicted in brown. While our implementation can compute the fingerprints faster and is therefore faster to construct, Pretzer's implementation can answer longest come extension queries faster. Only longest come extensions that have a length between 2 to the power of 5 and 2 to the power of 9 can be answered faster using our implementation. However, both implementations have a common problem. They are only faster than the naive scan approach for longest come extensions that are longer than 2 to the power of 17. Otherwise, the naive scan approach is faster and requires the same space. This brings us to the last two approaches, the naive scan and the string synchronizing sets. We see that the naive scan is faster than the ultra naive scan. While both have the same query throughput for small longest come extensions, comparing 16 characters at a time becomes useful for longest come extensions greater than 2 to the power of 9. Therefore, our naive approach is better than the ultra naive approach on all inputs. Our string synchronizing set data structure without the prefer long version achieves the same query throughput as the naive scan because we have to scan the text naively in the beginning. Only for medium sized longest come extension queries, the naive scan is ever so slightly faster than our string synchronizing set data structure. This is because we cannot answer these medium sized queries using only our initial scan but have to also answer a longest come extension query on T prime. Unfortunately, for medium sized queries, the longest come extension on T prime is small and it would be faster to scan the text naively. Nevertheless, for longest come extensions greater than 2 to the power of 12, the string synchronizing set data structure becomes significantly faster than all other approaches. Also, not very surprisingly, our prefer long version is slower for short queries but becomes the fastest longest come extension data structure for longest come extensions greater than 2 to the power of 10 or 2 to the power of 12 when we also include the text that we only consider in the paper. Therefore, using the prefer long version might be beneficial when one expects lots of long longest come extension queries. And with this result, I will conclude this presentation. We have seen that despite come belief, there are longest come extension data structures that are better than the naive scan approach. When a slight memory overhead of 10 to 20% of the input size fits into main memory, our string synchronizing set longest come extension data structure is the fastest longest come extension data structure out there. Here, it might be useful to test different tau values and the expected length of the longest come extensions, as our prefer long version can increase the throughput significantly. Otherwise, when one expects long longest come extension queries but cannot spare the overhead of the string synchronizing set data structure, the approaches based on Rabin calf fingerprints are very useful as they work in place. Here, one has to decide if the significantly better construction time of our implementation is worth the slightly lower query throughput compared with Pretzer's implementation. However, if one cannot spare the memory overhead and cannot overwrite the text, the naive scan approach is still the best solution for the longest come extension problem. Finally, our code is available under the BSD license at GitHub, so please check it out and thank you very much for your attention.